So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a simple multi-cam editing workflow using the brand new LumaFusion 4.0 update, which will be available soon to the public. And the price is gonna be 19.99 US dollars. So without further ado, let's jump over to LumaFusion and let me show you how easy it is to use the multi-cam feature using four cameras here in the studio. So starting from a new project, we first need to add a multicam layer. And to do that, we need to select the add clip selection button, which is on the bottom center of our screen. And by selecting this, we see a new added option called a multicam container. This is the container or layer which holds your media files. By selecting the multicam container option, you will now see a new layer added to your timeline. Above the layer, you can also see two options a synchronizer and a switcher option. In order to import our media to the multicam container, we need to select the synchronizer. Now, once we're inside the synchronizer and we want to exit back to our timeline, we can do this by tapping the close button in the middle of our screen. Now, looking at the switcher option, we can see that this is being grayed out and we're not able to enter this section at this point. That's because we don't have any media imported to our multicam container. So let's go back to the synchronizer by selecting the synchronizer option above the multicam layer. Inside the synchronizer, we have seven tracks, one for your main audio and six layers for your videos or photos. The master audio layer is where you add your external audio file if you record using a separate microphone or record your audio separately from the video, like doing a voiceover. Now for my editing style and the way I need to trim my clips and my audio recording, I don't need to use the extra audio layer. Now looking at the top left of my screen here, this is where I have the media. Now this also depends on uh, your layout, so if your layout is looking a little bit different, it will either be on the left, right or on the bottom section of your screen. Now most of you are already familiar with how this works, so I'm not going to dive too deep into the media section in today's video but this is gonna be where you locate the media you want to import to your projects. So after locating your media, you can start dragging each clip into the media drop zones below. I like to keep things organized, so I always put my main footage on track one. This clip usually has a dedicated microphone attached to it, so this will also be the audio reference for the remaining clips. The next clip I'm importing is a side shot from the action three, and since this is an action camera, the clips are usually split in half when recording for a longer period of time. So that means the footage from the Action 3 has two clips that needs to be imported. So after dragging the first clip into the drop zone number 2, even if the next clip is also a new clip, you don't have to place it on track number 3. You can also stack the clips as you want in the different drop zones. So if I place the second clip from the Action 3 now in the same drop zone as the first one, it will be placed at the end of the first clip on the same track. The next clip I'm gonna add has the same split as the Action 3, and this was recorded on the GoPro Hero 10 as my overhead shot. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the second clip here and place that in the same drop zone as the first clip. The last clip is from my Insta360X3, just to get an overview of the studio space. Now we have four cameras imported to the multicam container. But if we zoom in and take a look at the waveforms here, we can see that none of these are synchronized. Now before we do additional tweaks and start trimming our sequence, we want to synchronize the audio to make the trimming process easier. So in order to sync our media, we need to move down to the sync method option, which is down here. Selecting this, we have four options to choose from. You can either sync automatically or by audio or timecode. You also have the option to sync manually by selecting none. This will allow you to freely move the layers around and synchronize by looking at the waveforms. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna select audio. Once the synchronizer is complete, we can zoom in and see that the waveforms of the different clips are now matching, meaning our clips are now synced. This will make the editing process faster when we move over to the switcher. But before we do that, we also might want to add some changes like trimming away the parts we don't want and add some color grading. Now, since I don't have a dedicated audio file, I also want my best microphone or the video with the best audio playing throughout the video. 
this will sound much more professional than if my audio was switching from one camera to the other. Now, if you don't know which video has the best audio, you can check that by selecting each layer on the timeline and do a playback, and then listen to the audio coming from that clip. Now, here we have the DJI Mini 3 Pro, which is definitely my favorite drone. DJI Mini 3 Pro, which is definitely my favorite. Now, here we have the DJI Mini 3 Pro, which is... Now here we have the DJI Mini 3 Pro which Here we have the DJI Mini 3 Pro so the first layer had the best audio, so this is going to be my main audio which will run throughout my sequence. So to make sure that the audio coming from the other clips are muted, I can either map the audio from these clips to the main audio coming from track 1 by selecting the speaker icon and then select the number 1. Or we can select mute. You can also drag the audio sliders down to zero if you find that to be faster. But as long as the audio is coming from your main clip or microphone, you should be all good, unless you need the audio coming from different clips. So now that we have the audio mapped to the best microphone, we can start to trim down the clips. So what I'm going to do now is to place the playhead at the point where I want to make the first cut. And this will also be the beginning of my sequence. So here we have the DJI map and in order to make the cut, you tap on the clip you want to cut with two fingers. This will split the clip at the playhead and the beginning can now be removed. To remove the clips you don't need, you can either select and tap hold on the layer and push it up towards the previous screen to delete it or you can select the clip and then tap the trash can. Now before I continue the trimming, I want to add some color correction to the main clip, which is recorded in S-Log3. So by color correcting this now, I don't have to go back and do copy pasting of the correction later and that will also save me some time. So I'm going to select the clip I want to color correct and then move over to the color and effects section. Here you can add your color grading, your effects and do all the tweaks you want to do to a certain clip. For this, I'm just going to use my basic S-Log3 correction LUT and add some changes with a color preset. Now the next step is to trim away the parts I don't need. So by going through the entire sequence here, I place my playhead at the point I want to make a cut. And then I tap with two fingers on the screen to split the clip in two. Now here we can also see one of the clips from the Action 3. This has not been synchronized. So in order to make this look good and be synced with the audio coming from the main camera, we might want to do this manually. Now since we started the entire process by syncing all the clips by audio, we can now go down to the sync method and change this to none. This will not apply any changes to the tracks but will give us the option to freely adjust the layers. So now that we set this to none, I can easily trim and adjust the clip which is out of sync manually and then put it back in place. Now when this is corrected, the next step will be to trim away the remaining parts. Now after doing all the trimming of our sequence, we can see that we have huge gaps between each of the cuts and this will create empty spots in our video. So we have two ways of correcting this. One is to go back to the timeline by selecting the close button inside the synchronizer and if we look at the layer here, we can see all the dead spots which we want to remove. Here we can easily trim the clip by cutting away the parts which has no media, but if we do so, we might also experience some issues with the switcher, which is where we want to head next in order to select our camera angles. So if we now do a few cuts here on the timeline, we can see that the multicam container gets split in half. And if we now move over to the switcher, we can see the same issue. And once the playhead reaches the end of the first no clip, interferences and no wind. The playback stops and you will have to go back out to the timeline, select the next container and then go back into the switcher to continue. The other option to correct this is to go back into the synchronizer and make sure that the sync method is set to none. But since we changed this earlier, we can now tap hold and drag to multi-select the layers we want to move. 
So what I'm going to do here is to start at the end and then select the last layers and drag to the layers in front and then just stack up more layers as I go, dragging them closer to the beginning of the sequence. Now once everything is stacked up, all the space between the different layers have been removed and we now have a perfect multicam clip. And now we're going to exit the synchronizer by choosing the close option and then move over to the timeline and select the switcher. Inside the section of the switcher, I have now four thumbnails which represent the four different cameras I used. The first one is the talking head clip, the second one is the side shot, third one is the overhead shot and the last one is the overview. Now what's really awesome with the switcher section is that you're able to see a live preview of all the clips you have added to the multicam container and this makes the editing much more convenient. Now before starting the selection you want to have your playhead at the beginning and then select the thumbnail or the camera angle of the video you want to start first. But in this case, my main camera was already placed on track number one, so that means this will automatically be selected as the camera that starts the sequence. And by tapping on the play button, the video will start playing, and I can easily select the camera angle I want by tapping on each thumbnail. Now if it happens that you do a mistake, like I was doing right here, you can easily change this by taking your playhead and put back on that exact spot and then tap on a different thumbnail. That's how easy and convenient it is to use. It's up to 25 kilometers with the plus battery and up to 18 kilometers with the standard battery. That's also in optimal conditions, meaning no wind and no interferences. The Mini 3 Pro has a 1 1 3rd inch seamless sensor with 48 megapixels and a 82 degree field of view equivalent to 24 millimeter and a fixed aperture of f1.7. So that means this lens is bright. And that also means you should use an ND filter when filming in. In, uh, bright conditions. It also means that the low light capabilities of this drone is going to be better than some of the other drones that DJI offers. Now it also has two color profiles which you can choose from. It has the normal color profile and also the 10-bit D Cine light color profile if you want to add some additional color grading to your footage and get more dynamic range. But unlike the Mavic 3 Classic, the Mini 3 Pro only offers you a 2x digital zoom in the highest resolution. So it can also record up to 4K60 and take high quality 48 megapixel photos. So that's also something to consider if you're going to decide between these two drones. So now that we've finished the sequence in the switcher section, we can close the switcher and go back to the timeline. Here we can see our finished multicam sequence. Now here you can also do some additional tweaks, like trimming the clips by selecting the container and then select the clip you want to trim, and drag the handles in any of the direction to adjust the length. No interferences and no wind. The lens has a 84 degree field of view equivalent to a 24. Now here's a pro tip if you're using different cameras with the same color profile or if you're using like 3 or 4 GoPros or any other action camera or camera for that matter which has a similar color profile. Instead of going back into the synchronizer to color grade and copy the grading to each layer, you can actually apply the color correction and grading to the multicam container, almost like an adjustment layer. So by selecting the container and then double tapping on a clip and then go over to the color and effect section, and let's just do a color preset and add some brightness here just to show you the example. I can now select the clipboard and then choose copy, then we can go back out to the timeline. And now by selecting the multicam container, that means the entire layer, not only a video file inside a container, but the entire layer, we can select the clipboard and make sure that the color icon is the only one being blue. Then select paste 
and you now have the correction or grading or adjustment added to the entire sequence despite the container having multiple clips from different cameras. So by adding the correction to your cameras within the synchronizer section, you can easily add a simple LUT to the container to make the process a whole lot faster. But I think a tutorial on that topic is worthy of its own video, so stay tuned for the different ways that you can use the multicam container. Also, when playing through your multicam sequence, if you find some clips that lasts a little bit long or short, you can always go back to the switcher by selecting the container and then choose the switcher. And again, place the playhead at the point you want to add some changes, and then simply tap on a clip you want to show. So that's LumaFusion's multicam. I hope you enjoyed today's breakdown of this feature. Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more videos. And if you found any value in today's video, let me know by dropping a like. And until next time, take care and I will see you soon.